Um, I kind of looked at this interview with Elon Musk discussing some, or not interview, but a feature on Elon Musk that was featured on the National Review, um, written by an author who has a book. I think uh, Mission is it Mission to Mars. I've kind of had, I've got it on my Amazon wish list. I'm definitely going to uh, cop that in the next couple of weeks and have a read. But it's an interesting um, article because, of course, you know what we're going through at the moment. Um, there's this idea that maybe this is a sign that we've exhausted the resources on planet Earth, that we should maybe look in to broaden our horizons and colonize other planet, colonize other planets in order to kind of extend our lifespan um for generations to come of course some of the work that elon is doing it probably won't he will probably won't see the fruits of it until he's long gone i'm sure he's aware of that but the idea that you know we could be a multi-planetary species is now not so crazy as it was maybe when it first got announced i was a big fan of it anyway from the beginning because i just think it kind of feeds into my sci-fi fantasy um i've always kind of had aspirations of you know exploring other planets and going floating through the solar system but logic logic logistically and maybe practically probably is not something i'll end up doing but just the idea that somebody is out there pushing it and doing that is really interesting i remember seeing i remember hearing peter till talk once one of the co-founders of uh paypal and uh you know a person that was very instrumental in terms of kind of changing narrative around trump when he was trying to get elected he mentioned that he's, he was frustrated with the lack of progress in Silicon Valley, right? He was saying that there was a lot of... I think this was during a time when Angry Birds got bought out or something, right? Do you remember Angry Birds got sold to some company for a mad, mad amount, amount of money? I don't know if it was. But I remember him saying that there were too many startups that were focused on trying to make the next Angry Birds as opposed to really, uh, you know, changing human history forever, right? Really kind of pushing things forward. Um, not a lot of more people were doing it because most of the money was in making, you know, the Tinder of, the Uber of, right? No one was really focused on kind of bigger problems that were kind of, maybe you wouldn't necessarily see the fruits of it in your lifetime, but they would they would kind of impact people from generations to come. And um, that got me thinking, of course, that was very true a statement. And then you somehow have someone like Elon Musk comes along, you know, he, uh, he wants to bore tunnels under LA to kind of, you know, ease the traffic flow. Uh, he wants to make electric cars the next big thing, which is obviously it turned out to be... Um, then he wants to make us a multi-planetary species. But one of the things that kind of sparked my interest a lot with it, that got me thinking, was this idea that in order to kind of fund the project, he wanted to make the starship that he's kind of going to fly everyone to Mars to, to kind of be able, or especially at that time, the BFR, it had this point-to-point -point travel thing, this idea that you could kind of get onto a starship or get into an Elon Musk rocket, and it could take you to Singapore in 40 minutes, right? And then fly back again. And that was a way to kind of generate income, of course. And then there was the idea that because the capacity, the, I mean, the payload capacity was increased, they could obviously get people to kind of pay for tickets to go to the Mars or to go to the moon. All these really clever ideas around it. But the idea of somehow being able to make uh, Mars habitable for people was something that a lot of people kind of scoffed at. But now that we're going through what we're going through, it, the idea doesn't seem that crazy. But I guess one of the things that you kind of want from it, and I guess you can read, definitely check out this article. It's called um, Elon Musk's Plan to Settle on Mars. I won't really read the whole thing, but definitely check it out. It's got me thinking about all of that. I'll just have it in the show notes for you to go check out. But one of the things I was thinking about it was that if you do end up colonizing Mars, you can't do the same old, same old. You can't have us um, act in the way that we're acting now on Earth. You can't have the same systems in place. Because I look at some of the stuff that's happened, especially in America, in terms of how different states are dealing with the pandemic or the epidemic that we have going on at the moment with the coronavirus, is that they're all taking different leads on it. There's obviously a governmental oversight, but for the most part, the actionable stuff that's happening is happening on a state level via the mayor, right, via the governor. They're sort of actioning things, right? And people are doing it in different ways. Handling People have, you know, different levels of uh, uh, caution, maybe different levels of risk avoidance, wherever it may be. So some of the results are being skewed and there's not a uniform approach, which obviously isn't going to help everyone in the long term. But it got me thinking about the idea that some of the people who are doing it correctly, right, who are kind of taking it seriously, maybe like, you know, Andrew Cuomo, uh, Cuomo sorry, the dude from, uh, the governor from New York, who's kind of taken a big, uh, kind of, you know, who's kind of taken it, taking the balls by the horn and really try to prove his worth in that regard, has take, do, done a good job. But there's also a part of me that's a bit like, you know what, part of the reason why some of these people are being so strong 
and kind of pushing things forward because you know politics is a popularity contest they want to get elected next election so they're trying to make sure everyone knows that they're at front they're the front of this you know they've got the tie off they've got the they've got the Pete Buttigieg uh, sleeves rolled up they're trying to look like they're doing something just so they can get elected so it's not necessarily coming from like a sincere place so if you do go and colonize Mars you don't want anyone doing anything for the sake of making people's lives you don't want anyone doing something in Mars just for the sake of making sure they get elected. You want systems in place that allows it to be it to work for the greater good and not just for individuals, not just for like a certain subsect of people, right? I hear people on social media getting annoyed that you know celebrities are getting tests before regular folk. It could be just you know the fact that they got money. You know, money buys you access and and influence and connections, and it is what it is. But there's also this idea that why can't this approach be uniform? Why can't everyone with a means or that can prove they don't have the means be able to get those same resources? Right? That's what you'd want. So if you do extend life onto Mars, you want to have an approach, a system in place that benefits everybody. Everyone gets a benefit of it, not just a certain subset of people. Um, you want to do things completely different to how you've done it on Earth. You don't want to have the same approaches. You don't want to have the same, uh, I don't know, populism ideas nationalistic ideas um selfishness you want people to operate in groups right or in tribes and not in silos and not on their own you want it to bend you want everything to go back to how you can benefit mars and not benefit a subsect of people of course there's going to be people that are going to you know diverge and do their own thing and become you know mars anarchists or whatever it may be but for the most part you want everyone to kind of pull in the same direction and that is the best way to do it and i guess looking at it now because i'm sure there's going to be a lot of people having conversations about oh things are going to change now for the better because you know situations happen and we've all realized how we need to be interconnected and how we are so similar but you also need to be aware that things might just continue going on as they have always have people are just going to go back to revert into type be selfish be self-absorbed and all that sort of stuff so the only way to kind of take a lesson from it is to note down what's happened note down the errors of our ways and then put a system in place that when we do go and explore you know the universe we kind of do things a bit differently because the last thing you'd want is to have this amazing terraform planet you know equipped with all the latest technology solar powered you know then be suddenly go back to what we know now where you've got this weird popularity contest between these dudes that all look the same all interconnected all have the same objectives have very sketchy business dealings right you're hearing all these stories about these politicians who had stock in certain x company and they offloaded it before the virus spread and acquisitions of insider trading and all this sort of really nefarious stuff that doesn't need to happen right because at the end of the day like we all have family members we all have people that we know who are elderly people who are in bad situations not through no fault of their own who are now being you know ripped apart who are now being taken away from their families because somebody somewhere on a cayman islands who you know is fucking over his own district has now suddenly sudden affected everyone else in, in the country or in the state in general so there definitely needs to be a different approach to it. and i guess reading this article especially um, from uh, robert zubrin definitely made me um think that there needs to be a different approach to it because part of the reason why this guy really likes elon musk who i think he says he kind of feels like he got a lot of his ideas from him um is that i think it says in the end right uh yeah i'll read this, this mb he says here um at this last two paragraphs says if you want to explore if you if you want to either explore or settle on mars you need to land on mars the goal of the dst plan which is from nasa however is neither exploration or settlement it's expenditure rather than offer the simplest most efficient path to the red planet the dst architecture offers the most complex in order to provide uh, rationales mb not reasons for as many new technology development programs as possible right so he's basically saying the nasa plan is just a whole waste of time then he kind of goes on to elon musk theory um, Elon Musk approaches the opposite. NASA's program is vendor-driven. He's purpose-driven. He's not concerned with justifying expenditures on a uh, raft of potentially useful technologies. He wants to get his program done with the least amount of new development. His attitude is, show me why I need it. He may push this too far. As noted, I believe he could be, uh, he'd be wise to develop a mini starship to reduce the power requirements for making a return fuel to Mars because I think his idea is to kind of have a starship launch into orbit, have another... Um, uh, ship come up with fuel refuel that starship and then that payload heads over to mars and then from mars when it lands by the time it lands whatever rover that was there before has terraformed the planet has been able to kind of extract some minerals to make the fuel that fuel then goes into that, that 
that kind of stuff and then by that time the other ones are coming up so they're reloading and then those are going back and forth but he needs to but i say think he needs to produce a 50 i think now or maybe up to a thousand in order to kind of get it where it needs to be which again you know is nutty but the whole idea about it is this purpose of like extending life and the only way to do this is do it quickly you know the longer you take the less likely it's going to happen and he says um he kisses here uh da, da. Um, he may push this too far as noted i believe he'd be wise to develop a mini starship to reduce the power requirements uh for making the fuel to mars he disagrees he says show me Elon Musk says our conclusions on that point diverge but i really love the way he thinks and that's the most important part right because it's the kind of thinking that can get us there and i guess that's what we want we want people that are just thinking a bit different not just doing the same old same old that could be the best way to go about things because part of the hesitation some of these governors or some of these politicians are having in terms of dealing with the coronavirus isn't because they're not too sure if it's real they just don't want to make a mistake they don't want to be the person that acted too hot quickly hastily or was a bit too lax and then got blamed for it later on they all they just want to appear like they're doing something about doing stuff and again it's a very i think you once that's why i probably don't like listening to your politicians speak but then when you realize what how they sound and what they say you realize it's all a lot of fluff it's all a lot of bullshit they have a very particular skill of being able to say a lot of words right fit a lot of words into a sentence without actually addressing the point um you, you only look at someone like a mike pence who never really answers the questions directly he's always really good at kind of answering the question in a summer in a kind of roundabout way and then by the time he goes to the end where you think he's going to actually address your question he moves on to the next one it's a very clever trick but for the people that you know who are being governed by him who live in his constituency it's not the most entertaining thing to be a part of so um hoping this is something that we can explore later on again it's not something that's going to be appealing to everybody i think they're obviously touting tickets about hundred thousand to three hundred thousand each um which obviously is not going to be available to everyone but again there's an option to go so let's see what happens isn't it um if things don't change for the better and on earth i could definitely see people moving to another planet and trying to you know um live a more fulfilled life that way because you know if you have the means to why wouldn't you do it really uh, instead of sitting here complaining especially people that you know complaining they're going to move to canada that didn't do it but yeah definitely check out the article it's really interesting um it's titled here elon Musk plan to settle on mars by mr robert zubin is it no robert zubrin it's robert zubrin check that out I'll, again i'll link in the show notes it's on the national review website